ninth and in center field. Temps in the mid 70s. Light winds as we're underway from Tallahassee. Dick Hauser Stadium, Mike Martin Field. Always fun when these two teams get together. One strike offering, belted to right and hit deep off the bat of Curland. And it is gone. Goodbye, home run. Cade Curland coming off a 1 for 12 weekend at Mizzou, was 0 for 5 on Sunday. Says, How do you do, John Abraham? And knocks him out of the yard. It's 1 0. Well, Florida State had won the first two matchups this season. And I think Florida's had enough. Curlin gets a fastball mid at middle half away at 92 miles an hour. Just goes with the pitch. Just a no doubter. Seventh home run of the year for the sophomore from Tampa. And that brings up Caglione. Caglione 391. Those 16 homers and 34 runs batted in. He swings through that breaking ball. And this is a big dude, six foot five, 250 pounds. Yeah, he went walking by us in the in the uh, dugout, and I was going, "Jeez, this guy's enormous." And he tags one to right center field, high and deep, and it is carrying out goodbye. Home run, Jack Caglione, and the Florida Gators have made a statement here before Florida State can record him out. It's 2-0 on back-to-back -back homers from Kerland and Caglione. These guys are wasting no time greeting Abraham rudely. Fastball up and away. And you can see the, one of the best, easily probably the best hitter in the country gets a fastball up and away and takes it out over right center. And now a big cut here from Colby Shelton, the shortstop, batting in the three-hole. You mentioned it, Florida really needing a good night. Humbled by Missouri over the weekend and so far outscored by Florida State this season. 26 to 11 coming into the night. And now this one is hit deep to the corner, but foul. I mean, if I'm Abraham right now, I'm doing something different. I'm just stepping off the mound, taking a timeout. That is just the worst case scenario. A pitcher can walk into a game. Second pitch of the game's a bomb. Fifth pitch of the game's a bomb. And you haven't missed a bat yet. 270, 15 homers, 32 runs batted in for Shelton. This is going to be gobbled up by Daniel Cantu at first base. Takes it himself. One down. John Abraham gave up a 448 foot walk off homer in the 11th to Cameron Leary at Boston College on Saturday. Link Jarrett was hoping that he had put that behind him, was going to have a good outing here tonight, albeit short. I mean, they don't expect him to go long here tonight, but uh, didn't start the way he had hoped. No, it never does. I mean, you know, you try to find things and, and you're going out and trying to establish a good fastball, you know, as and get into a rhythm, just locating in and out. And then all of a sudden it's like, all right, fastball away. Curlin leans out, goes the other way with it, bomb. And then probably the best hitter in the country gets a fastball up and away and turns it around to right field. Now you're going, OK, I got an out. Let's settle in a little bit. No walks, no more damage. Tyler Shelnut bouncing ball to third. That's where Cam Smith occupies the hot corner. Good strong arm. And Shelnut, the senior out of Lake City, is thrown out. Two down. Cam Smith better not take too much time on that ground ball. He took, took a little bit, stutter step, looked down at the ball. Next thing you know, Shelnut's about on the bag. Here's the designated hitter, Luke Heyman. One for seven against Florida State this year. But homered in two of the three games at Missouri over the weekend. He carries a four-game hit streak into the night. Boy, the hitting was almost non-existent the first two games of that series at Mizzou. Just two hits in Friday's 11-inning game. They had seven in the Saturday loss and then scored 11 runs on 15 hits on Sunday. Bats kind of woke up, but... Wasn't enough. Got swept. Well, they got walked off on Sunday. Ninth inning. 
single to win it by Missouri and, and coach O'Sullivan was was very complimentary of the Missouri pitching staff. Heyman is out. And Jeter gets the start. It's going to be a little bit slider heavy. Fastball's got some arm side run that you just saw. Max Williams up there, the center fielder out of Mormon Beach, Florida. Homered and drove in three runs in the three game series of Boston College, started in all three games. And split time in center field with DMS Ross. Ross still making his way back from injury, not 100%. The 0 2. It's down and in. And you see the numbers on Williams 262, four homers, 14 runs batted in. 1 2 from Slater. Slow bouncing ball. Perlin has to hurry. The stretch from Caglione, and they got it. Williams runs well. The throw from Curlin in time for the first down. And I think Florida State wants a review here on the first ball put in play of the night for the Seminoles. My first take was he was safe. My second take is he's safe. I think you're right. I was actually kind of surprised at the first base umpire's call. This goes kind of a soft ground ball up the middle. Curlin goes to his right, fields it, and then stays on the right leg. Doesn't get a whole lot on the throw. And then to leave it high, Keglione does his best to get to it. But I think Williams beat out an infield single right there. Well, the call was out. It's got to be indisputable video evidence to overturn it. And I, I think there's enough there. Brandon Henson, the first base umpire. Travis Clark behind home plate. Ryan Clark's at second. Jeff Gosney is occupying third tonight. Here's another look. I think he was there. I think I'm going to put in a new rule for the NCAA that if the runner is touching first base when he's got his hands extended into a safe sign, at the same time the glove, you know, makes contact with the ball, he's automatically safe. Sounds like something that they'll immediately <laughs> pass. Max Williams was sniffing a base hit right out of the box. Probably had some great looks at that. Max Williams, a, a transfer from Alabama. As Link Jarrett has really done a good job rebuilding this team. Finished last in the ACC last year. He revamped the roster. 26 new players, including Williams. That's the most in 12 years of his coaching career. It, as far as new players on one of the Link, Link Jarrett's rosters. And it's immediately paid dividends for the Seminoles this year. Well, that's the world we live in. Florida State finished early last year. So while everybody else was running through regionals, super regionals, and college world series, they were able to go out and start working on their their roster, their lineup, where do they need to make some fills, and Max Williams was one of those guys they went and got from Alabama. Still looking at it. And he was called out on the field. We'll see if it's overturned. There's Link Jarrett. Did not seem very difficult. Here we go. Yeah, he's safe. You got it right. Congratulations, Greg. Your streak is still perfect. You're right again. I'm one for one this year. So Max Williams aboard for Cam Smith. Big draft eligible sophomore. His name is on the lips of every major league scout in the country. Fifth in the ACC in hitting. Comes in with a 392 average. Big swing and a miss. Strike one. Eight home runs, 29 runs batted in. He's a sophomore out of Lake Worth, Florida. How about a 41 game on base streak? Yeah. Going back to last year. Popped up, and that's going to say a lot of play. He's also on the Golden Spikes watch list. The Knowles have three players on that watch list. Florida State and Texas A&M, the only two teams in the country that have three players on that mid-season watch list.
Florida State trying to answer back here in the first down, 2 0. Ground ball, that's going to get into right field. Cam Smith with a base knock. So back to back singles for Florida State. The Gators did it with the long ball in the top of the first. So far, the Knolls going station to station here in the bottom of the inning. Well, first pitch was a slider, swing through. Next pitch is a foul ball. Smith is late. Slater tries to go with the fastball inside part of the plate on an 0-2 and just try to catch Smith snoozing a little bit. And Smith does a great job, stays inside of it, shoots it through the 43 hole. And here comes Tibbs. RBI opportunity right away. He had a three-run homer in Gainesville earlier this season game one of the season series just a monster shot crowd would love to see him come on corked again this is it one of his 13 home runs on the year three of his 52 runs batted in just stayed back on an off speed look like a change up now slater giving up some soft contact at this point bad luck that you get weak contact and you get two base hits, but you got runners on first and second, probably the one of the top hitters in the country up, and you can't nibble around. You got to challenge him at some point. Well, he was swinging on three and zero. Oh. Well, that just tells you that he's going to be swinging on three one. So you better come up with something different, or you better come up with a little bit better something on your fastball. Three balls and a strike to the number two hitter in the ACC with a 421 average. And now it's a full count. And Slater battles back. Well, Tim's got a little aggressive outside the zone. He's been so good at getting pitchers in the zone and getting something to hit. He went chasing, no one getting a fastball. Chase it up out of the zone for ball four. Two on, nobody out. 3-2 pitch to Tibbs. Swung on and pulled foul. We were talking to Link Jarrett this week. And he calls Tibbs a thinking man's hitter. Really knows how to work the strike zone for a power hitter. Has twice as many walks as strikeouts. Line drive base hit. That's going to get into the corner. Williams coming around third. He'll score. Being held up as Smith at third. It's an RBI double for James Tibbs. And it's a 2-1 game. Well, Clay, you nailed it. A thinking man's hitter. All right, the pitch before this is a 92-mile-an-hour fastball that he obliterated way foul. So Florida goes, all right, if we soften it up a little bit, he should be out front of it. We should get a, th a swing through strike three. They go with a little cut fastball in, and Tibbs is right on time and laces it down the right field line. Just a great piece of hitting. He outthunked me there. <laughs> Do you want me to say something no, here? I'll okay. just leave it. I'll hold, I'll hold my tongue. <laughs> 53rd run batted in for Tibbs as Jaime Ferrer comes up. Junior left fielder. And he takes strike one. Ferrer has reached in all 31 games this year. He had a couple of homers and five runs batted in in the BC series over the weekend. That hit him. One strike offering from Slater rides in on Ferrer. And now the bases are loaded. Trying to do anything. This fastball's got just a little bit of arm side run. Almost a two seam fastball. Trying to get it in. It just gets it too far in. And Ferrer later available for that series. So Jackson West, the catcher now, comes up. West getting the start behind home plate. He's in the five hole tonight. Four for seven this year with an RBI against Florida. Line drive, that's another base hit. That's going to run all the way to the wall. Two runs are going to score. Ferrer is going to be held at third. 
Jackson West puts Florida State in front. Well, this goes, Ryan Slater has landed one breaking ball, one off-speed pitch for a strike, and that was the second pitch to Cam Smith, or the first pitch to Cam Smith. Ever since then, he has missed with sliders and missed with change-ups. Well, at this level, man, fastballs are coming, and these guys will not miss it. Jackson West gets a fastball down and in and drives it to right field. Jackson West, who made a handful of starts at Alabama last year as, as a freshman, Another guy that Link Jarrett picked up out of the transfer portal and has been a terrific addition. RBI's 15 and 16 on the year. And now here's Dinges putting it in play. And Caglione boots it. One run scores. Two runs come in. A two run fielding error for Jack Caglione. And it's five to two. What a response by FSU. You see, Cake Leone was off in the 43 hole. He tries to forehand that pitch, that, that ground ball, when it should have been a backhand. Comes off the glove. I mean, that would have been an RBI. West would have scored. And that's the end of Slater. Daniel Cantu, the seven hole hitter for Florida State, stands in and takes strike one. Cantu, 318, two homers, 18 runs batted in. So far, this is trending the way the first two games in the season series have trended. Line drive to left field. This is going to be another base hit. Hit number six for the Knowles. Two on and still nobody out. Well, sometimes you tip your cap. I mean... On occasion, I hated to do it as a pitcher, but sometimes you tip your cap. This is a good, well-located fastball down away. Cantu leans out and just slices it into the left field. You hate to say it, and you hate to be sitting in the bullpen right now, but FSU is looking really hitterish right now. Drew Ferro gets a chance. Another lefty in this Florida State lineup takes inside. He's from Tallahassee. Glad to be back home. Had a freshman All-American season last year at UCF. Went to Florida High. Grew up right here in town. Another strike. Fisher Jamison. So the Gators used 15 total pitchers in the first two games of their series. Nine in game two alone. Hit hard, and that's a base hit to right. Marco Dinges is going to be held up by Ty McGahee, the third base coach. And the bases are loaded again for the Seminoles. Seven hits in this first inning. I'm going to go back. I don't think any of these base hits have been on anything other than a fastball. 1-1 one, one count. Jamison lands a slider 1-0. Great pitch. Goes back with a fastball, gets it down and in, which is a no-go to left-handed hitters. And Faroe just laced it through the 43 hole. That's spiked. Out in front of home plate, knocked down by Tanner Garrison. Maybe the best, best defensive catcher in the entire country. As Alex Lodis hits. Sophomore shortstop. Coming off a 5-for-10 weekend with a couple of runs batted in at Boston College. Swung on and missed. Ball on a strike. Good slider down out of the zone. And I found out through my career that every hitter wants to be a hero in these moments. And Lodis goes chasing a 1-0 slider at 58 feet. I got to throw it again. Lays off. Two balls in a strike. So that's the game of pitching right there. It's like, okay, if you want to go chasing something out of the zone, I'm going to throw it again and make you make an adjustment. And Lodis makes the adjustment. And now let's see where Jamison goes. Is he going to go with another fastball? Yeah. And he did, and he missed out. Florida State 
Was swept by the Gators last year, not trying to return the favor. Haven't swept Florida in a three-game season series since 2000. Got down 2 nothing on back-to-back -back home runs in the top of the first, but they've exploded for five. And looking for more as Lodi's fouls it off. I cannot think of the last time I saw a team bat around in the first inning of a game with nobody out. I mean, we don't have anybody out. And they're on their nine-hole hitter. Florida State scored 12 in the first game, 14 in the second. Ground ball to short. They won't get two. Shelton the throw to first to get the first out of the inning, but another run comes in. And as Dinja scores, the Seminoles have batted around here in the first inning. Nice job by Jamison. Fastball in on the hands. Gets the solid ground ball, the shortstop that you would want in that situation. Just did not hit it hard enough. And Shelton does the only thing he can do, which is go to first base and get the first out of the inning. Back to the top at Max Williams. Yeah, it seems like forever ago we had that long review. Williams put it in play. Yeah. <laughs> the second baseman, Curlin, the throw to first. It was a bang bang play, originally ruled out. It was overturned. And then ever since then, six runs on seven hits for Florida State. One error, so five of those runs are earned. A couple of sliders by Jamison way down and in on Williams. See if he can make one a little bit better than that. Two strikes to the Alabama transfer, and he strikes out. So Fisher Jamison records the first strikeout for Florida pitching tonight. And they're two down. Just a couple of nasty sliders down and in, and this one with some depth straight down on top of home plate. Garrison, solid block. Man, if I had him behind the plate, I could trust throwing a breaking ball with a runner <laughs> on third base every day of the week. There's no doubt that Garrison is in the game for his defensive prowess. Look at that. Florida took 31 pitches to record the first out tonight. I just, it's, it, it's stunning. It really is, because, I mean, some of these pitches were really good. Some of them were predictable, which is... You know, what happens when you give up line drives is when things get predictable. But Florida was unable to land anything off speed early on, and they could not get it out. Two strikes to Cam Smith. So Fisher comes in. But Florida State responds with a six spot in the bottom of the unit. One side. Greg Olson, 1989 American League Rookie of the Year. I'm Clay Maffick. Great to have you along here on a beautiful night in Tallahassee. Unless you're a pitcher. <laughs> well said. This is Ty Evans to lead it off. Six, seven, and eight for Florida. And followed by Thomas and Garrison. 1-1 one, one pitch. Breaking ball. Left side and past Cam Smith. Diving at third base. So Evans with the leadoff single here in the second inning. Nice piece of hitting by Ty Evans. Couple of breaking balls, three in a row, actually, which I kind of figured out in my life that that is not good. Need to show something else. That last one was a really good curveball out and down. And Evans just leaned out there and hooked it through the 56 hole. Nice diving effort by Smith. You know, Florida has hit John Abraham pretty hard here so far tonight as Dale Thomas shows bunt, bunts it foul. Three hits now against Abraham. Thomas in her second year at Florida after a transfer from Coastal Carolina. It was always his goal to get in a Gators uniform, and he's done that. Solid player at Coastal Carolina. And the 3B three B, three B spot. Really good player. Transferred over here. Got in about 30 games. Abraham comes set. Evans away from first. 
Pitches down. Two balls and a strike. We expect to see a few arms for Florida State. Abraham will be the opener. His career high for innings and pitches came against the Gators as it happens in Jacksonville. 55 pitches over three and a third. But that was in relief. Strike on the outside corner, two and two. Nice behind in the count curveball. Abraham has started throwing that this inning. Landing it for strikes. Now you have to protect it. The curveball's just not good enough by itself. Need to show that 92 up out of the zone. Protect it just a little bit. Thomas holds off. Dale Thomas been the primary third baseman. But only made one start at Missouri over the weekend. His bat has been a little slow to heat up this year. Hitting under 200. Full count. Here's a pitch. Runner goes. And that hit him. Dale Thomas takes one off the arm. So two on and nobody out for Tanner Garrison. And Link Jarrett comes out for conversation with home plate umpire Travis Carlson. I, I think he's asking. A, he showed no effort to move out of the way. Yeah, I mean, he leaned in and took it. But I didn't see any effort moving into it. You don't have to get out of the way. You just don't lean into it. And I thought Thomas just kind of rolled with it, rolled his shoulder. It was a hanging curveball. Had a little bit of time, so we're going to have another review. This would send the runner back to first base. If it's deemed that he got hit on purpose and, and did something to get in the way of it. So 3-2 curveball, runners off and running. If I was pitching, I would say that he could have gotten a pitch. Call yep. is confirmed or stands. We did not get uh, the definition of it, but Thomas stays at first. Runners on first and second. Nobody out. And here comes Link Jarrett. Now, I think this is going to be a move. It's going to be all for Abraham. John Abraham. Who made his. So two on nobody out for Tanner Garrison. Line drive back up the middle base hit. Ty Evans is going to be held at third by Taylor Black. Third base coach and the Gators have him loaded. Garrison just hops on a first pitch fastball down in the zone, drives it right back up the box. Nice piece of hitting. Nobody out. Gators trailing by four. Hold the runner up at third base. Base is loaded. Garrison. And here we go again, Clay. Yeah. Garrison, the transfer from Coastal Carolina. This first hit of the season against Florida State. And now Michael Robertson stands in. He was 0 for 2 against Florida State in the prior two games. Started game two in center field. Takes a strike on the outside corner. It's 1-1. One one. Now if you're looking around, you're Andrew Armstrong. You got bases loaded, nobody out. Your team's up four. They have been hitterish already. Trying to find a way just to keep this to one run allowed this inning. Little number. The shortstop's going to go to third for the force. Lodice gets the out. But Evans comes in to score to cut Florida State's lead in half. So a productive fielder's choice for Robertson. Yeah, slider down and away. Soft ground ball to shortstop. Lodice goes, all right, if you're going to run in front of me and take your time and block my vision, I'm knowing I'm not getting a double play out of this, so I'm going to take the easy out at third base. Great play. Back to the top of the order and Kate Curlin who homered in the first inning off of Abraham. He's going to send one in the air down the right field line. Long run for James Tibbs. He'll make the catch in foul ground. Quickly gets it back in. And the throw to third is a little wide. As Garrison tags up. So runners at the corners and two down. 
Erland's seen three pitches already. He trying to launch that fastball away. Just a bit tardy on it. Nice base running. Get to third base knowing that's the deepest throw that you're going to have in this ballpark from foul territory right field. Pitch. Great hitters that play the game. If you think you got them on a pitch, they are one step ahead of you when they are on that pitch. So right now this mound conversation is strictly how are we going to face him lefty lefty matchup trying to give Andrew Armstrong a good shot and just a little bit of an approach on how we're going to do this. And then the other piece of it is I'm going I have an open base. Yeah. I don't have to do a whole lot here in this situation. I mean it's second base. Yes. And then that brings up a guy Shelton who's got 15 home runs which not not that great of a matchup. So. That whole conversation for a couple minutes out there was strictly on how we're going to face Jack. Tag Leon could tie this one up with one big swing. He'll take up and in. He's got an 11 game hitting streak now. He has hits in 30 of the team's 32 games. What are you doing the other two? <laughs> Everything he hits is hit hard. Even his outs are impressive. I don't think we're going to see anything more than a slider right here on a 2-0 count. Went with a fastball, tried to get it up and in. Fastball down and away, missed wide. 2-0 from Armstrong. That's in on the hands, pulled foul. What a year 2023 was for Caglione. Started all 71 games, hit 323, set program records with 33 homers and 90 runs batted in. Also made 18 weekend starts and won seven games on the mound. It's this one in the year. Left center, it's going to stay in the ballpark. Ferrer is out there. He'll make the catch. And that does it. Up the inning for Florida State. Tips and an RBI double his first time up. Part of that. Six run first inning. I mean, the stars have come out. You know, Cam Smith's already got a base hit. Tibbs has an RBI double. Caglione has already gone deep. Doing what they're supposed to be doing. James Tibbs was the first baseman last year for Florida State, but he has served well as the everyday outfielder in right. And he's going to make a bid for a home run opposite field. Got it. Goodbye. What a night for Tibbs already at the plate. His 14th home run of the year and his 54th run batted in. It's seven to three. Sometimes you just watch guys in college hit and you go, you know what? There's not a ballpark that is big enough for them. This fastball is middle half away. It's elevated and he just stays inside of it. He's comfortable with the fact that the last at bat he got a cutter in. He's trying to be on time for both pitches and that is doing it at the best level. I'm walking him and I'm walking Jack. Just take your base. Seven runs on seven hits so far for Florida State. As Jaime Ferrer comes up. Hit by a pitch his first time up. He's got a base knock too. He'll round first and he'll hold there. Jaime Ferrer, who has never missed a start in his Florida State career. As Tibbs gets a curtain call from the crowd here at Dickhauser Stadium. There's Ferrer. Tonight starting in his 145th game at Florida State. That's thoroughly impressive. Now it's been hard to come by for the Florida Gators here tonight. Freshman. And that's really been the story of the season for the Florida pitching staff. It's been one freshman after another. In fact, they've used 10 rookie pitchers this year including six in SEC play that is the most in the league and coach O'Sullivan said it before the game we had the chance to sit in the dugout with him for a couple minutes and he said you know that's been it is is with the transfer portal 
we have some young pitchers that just haven't figured out how to navigate innings yet. And they're out here in the middle of the week and, and on an SEC play learning on the fly. But I would tell you, if you're walking into the game right now, you better show some off-speed pitches for strikes and protect them with the fastball and not the other way around because you're not getting anybody out with fastballs tonight. The West strikes out. Nice first out. Nice change up by Phil Pot. See the rotation starts inner half. Dives away. Good fade action on that pitch. Now bring up Marco Dinges. Reached down an error and scored in the first inning. Drove in four runs in the weekend at Boston College. Juco transfer from Tallahassee Community College. And has really settled into the DH role for the Knowles. That's a strike, one and one. I just feel like anybody that comes walking in right now out of the bullpen is going to move up the ladder in the ro bullpen rotation for the weekends if they do well tonight. You know, a lot of guys have struggled. Not great, you know, it hasn't been command issues. It's just been guys on time on fastballs, not very many breaking balls for strikes. And I'd be walking into the bullpen going, man, you know what? If I can throw up two innings today and, and throw up some zeros and have a good outing, I'm going to move up the rotation. Two and two. It's a rotation that has a lot of stuff. Three strikeouts tonight. 337 on the year. 10th nationally in strikeouts per nine as the Gators stack. This one is tagged to right center. Going back is Robertson. It's off the screen. Ferrer rounds third hard, but he'll hold there. Marco Dinges with a double off the fence. Two on, one out. Philpott had shown a couple fastballs away and missed wide. This ball is supposed to be in. You can see where the catcher Garrison set up. He's in. Gets it out over the plate. Dinges just drills it to the fence. Nice job by Florida with the cut and relay right here to keep the runner at third base. Cantu had a single his first time up in the first inning. Cantu uh, out of the transfer portal as well. Came from USF. His offensive contributions have been one thing, Greg, but it's his infield defense, which uh, was much needed for Florida State. They ranked 12th in the league in fielding percentage last year. Now they're fifth in the ACC at 979. That really helps, and that was the comment that I got about him, Cantu coming over said he's really made the infield a lot better and he's made this lineup a lot better. 2 on pitch to the big first baseman. Lifted high, deep, it is carrying and it is fair. Goodbye home run. Daniel Cantu with a three run homer. And it's 10 to three Seminoles. Second home run of the inning for Florida State. Philpott had shown a fastball in, got a swing through, tried to go back in there, and Cantu was hunting a fastball in her half. And this is one of those walk downs where you're going, if you're fair, you're so gone. Just stay fair for me. And then once the bat flip, it goes, okay, it's got to be fair. You can't bat flip on a foul ball. Did that land on the tent? Is that bouncing around on the 10? I think so. It's not on your pickup, don't worry. You're on the I other side. Park on the other field? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Drew Ferro chases one in the dirt. Off-speed pitch from Alex Philpott. Ferro with a single. His first time up. 10 hits now for Florida State. Make it 11. Drew Ferro with his second base knock. That is only the third breaking ball that's been hit for a base hit. The other 15, or the other 12 hits have been all fastballs. 
Now we're down to one person left in the Florida State lineup without a hit. And he's coming up now. Alex Lodis, he's only batted once. So, ooh, he's going to get hit here. As Phil Pot missed inside, plunks Lodis. And they're two on with one out. Sure, he's probably trying to move his feet, just try to make somebody on this Florida State team is so comfortable in the batter's box. And they have really piled it on Florida pitching so far in this season series, going for the sweep tonight. As we're back to the top of the order in Max Williams. Williams an infield single to start the game and struck out against James Fisher Jamison the second time. Tries to bunt his way on. He's going to be thrown out. As Phil Pot shows off a good arm. Off the mound. Second out. You can see this Florida State team, though, how, how exciting they are. They brought a resurgence to Florida State baseball. They started the year with 19 straight wins. They were the last unbeaten team in the country. And after that dismal year a year ago, the Florida State fans have come flocking back. Yeah, I mean, these guys have been doing it at the plate, on the mound. I mean, what a turnaround Link Jarrett did with this squad. Second best start in FSU history. Mike Martin's 2007 team started 23 and 0. That's when Buster Posey was still playing. Tony Thomas, Mark Hallberg, that bunch. Going for their 27th win here tonight. Pitch to Williams' lash foul. And it's two and one. What do you do right here? You got Cam Smith, Cape Cod MVP, on the draft radar. And then the next guy up is Tibbs with a double and a home run. You got two outs, 2-1 two count. Just threw a 2 0 slider. Nice pitch. That's what you do behind in the count to a power hitter. Throw something different. Nice slider. I'm just wondering are they going to give Max Williams a sacrifice for that bunt? Even though there was one out. Comebacker knocked down by Phil Pot. Not going to get him. Another run scores. Infield single for Cam Smith. That's 11 to 3. One ball right back up the middle. And Phil Pot is just off balance. To get it, tries to do everything he can to get a glove on it and actually kicks it about as far away as he could do it. RBI single for Cam Smith. And for the second time tonight, Florida State is batted around. My score sheet is an absolute wreck right now. I'm right with you. James Tibbs, he started off this inning with an opposite field home run to left. 14th of the year. Good sequence right there by Phil Pot. Fastball misses in, goes back with a changeup down and away. You can try to throw another changeup a little bit further down and away, try to get a ground ball like that. Now, do you throw three in a row? It's a gutsy call throwing three in a row. I might throw one fastball just to reset the brain of Tibbs and then come back to the changeup. They went with three straight changeups. Two and two. I'm sitting up in the booth trying to figure out how to get this guy out. Well, there it is. Changeup. That's the answer. Who started the night with back to back homers from Curlin and Caglione? It looked like the Gators were going to have their way tonight. But after that, it's been all Florida State. There you see Kevin O'Sullivan. His team dropped from number six to number 24 in the polls this week. As it's 2 0 here to the leadoff man, Colby Shelton. The RPI is down to 31. That's about a 10 point drop from 
where it was before that three game series at Missouri. And for the Gator fans right now, Greg, I mean, it's quickly gone from talk of maybe hosting a regional to asking the question, is this even a regional team? Well, with, with that comes the next level of the schedule and start looking down a little bit and, and Kevin O'Sullivan says he rarely does that he knew that the second half was going to be difficult but they got South Carolina that's lying right at Perot he's going to make the catch for the first out as Shelton is going for two here tonight but they got they got a gauntlet coming up where they're going to go on the road you can see what they've done so far they were just swept but they Two out of three against LSU, two out of three against Texas A&M. It's been their midweek games that are killing them. But it was fascinating talking to, to Coach O'Sullivan where he was saying that, you know, when they play in these big ballparks or the wind's blowing in, his team is very one-dimensional. It's very power happy. And they don't have a small ball element to their game. So he's, you know, he's starting to look around going, all right, you know what, I got to change things up a little bit around here and make an adjustment to what the college baseball's doing. I don't have any level of blunt, small ball, stolen base. I have power, power, power. And I think he was talking about it with us. This, I think it's time to, you know, make a couple adjustments. That's not going to help him this year, however. You're thinking as far as recruiting goes for the future. Well, I'm just talking about where they've struggled this yeah. year, and he recognizes yeah. it where they go to Missouri and, and the wind's blowing in and the home runs aren't going to help. And if they get behind in the game, yeah, the home runs will, will, will start to help, but you still got to play a small ball game. Tyler Shelnut, the comebacker, and Andrew Armstrong, who came out in relief last game, throws over the first. Two up, two down here in the Gators' third, but to your point, I mean, the, there are still opportunities out there for Florida. I mean, because of their schedule, but they could also be landmines. I mean, after South Carolina this weekend, they still have series at Vanderbilt, at Arkansas back to back. You got Tennessee, they've got Kentucky, which is having a great year. And then at Georgia, I mean, it's a it's a really scary situation for the Gators. Yeah, they got five top 25 teams coming up in the next five weeks. And there are some adjustments that they can be that could be made. But at some point you're going, all right, well, we're going to see where we stand here in the next couple of weeks. Strike called to Heyman, one and one to Luke, who grounded out to short, who's over for one. And Florida's got a couple of road series in the SEC back to back. And O'Sullivan was saying those can really knock you down if you go to Tennessee and then you go to Kentucky and all of a sudden you go two and four, you're way down the SEC chart. Fly ball. Here's Tibbs coming into foul ground. Is he going to get there? Oh, goes over the railing. Great effort. Can't make the catch. And you hope Tibbs is okay. He is, and in front of that right field rooting section, including the band, he gets a round of applause. What an effort. And it's right there, right before the balls get into the glove. He goes, I am out of time. I am running into the wall right here. And you can see the head kind of come down a little bit to see exactly where he was at and just missed the catch. Again, he was at first base all of last year. He's been out and right and he's done a really nice job. I'm standing on the mound right now. I'm turning around tipping my cap. I don't care if he dropped it, missed it. <laughs> that effort is unbelievable. I just missed down and in the appeal. First base umpire Brandon Henson says Nelly did not go. Popped up. Short left field. The shortstop Lodis is out there calling everybody off. That's going to be a tough play, but he gets it done. Film. <laughs> Jaime Ferrer to lead it off here. Four, five, and six for the Knowles. As Philpot gets a pop up 
Handled by Shelton at short. One up, one down here in the third. Now, I'll tell you, that Travis name, that's like a, that, that's a big deal around these parts. Of course, Devin played for Mike Martin in 2011 and 12 for a, a big league career. And then his brother Jordan was the Knowles quarterback for the last several years. Yeah. And he's readying himself for the draft coming up. Jackson West. Seminoles catcher, one for two tonight, has an RBI double to his credit. Also struck out. Alex Philpott, the third pitcher to work tonight already for Florida. He's given up three runs on four hits in an inning and a third. Hmm. That one backs off west. And Ryan Slater got the start here tonight for the Gators, but wasn't able to record it out. Gave up five runs on five hits right away in the bottom of the first. And Florida State came out swinging it and swinging it hot. Everybody in the lineup so far, but the nine hole hitter has a hit. Tibbs has two. Finally got him out last inning. And he's sitting there right now going, how did he get me out with four straight change-ups? Tibbs hit twice in the inning. As Florida State has batted around twice tonight. <laughs> two plate appearances, two times around the order. No, oh, I'm just looking at my score sheet. I'm glad it goes 16 innings, but I've already <laughs> wiped out my second innings, now my first. Uh-oh, look out. Jackson West got loose. That is gone. First home run of the year for Jackson West. The Knowles have put up a dozen tonight. First home run in a Florida State uniform for Jackson West, the sophomore from right here in Tallahassee. And he knew it as soon as he hit it. Little point into the dugout right here. No doubter to right center, fastball inner part of the plate. Hadn't seen one of those the whole at bat, so I'm kind of shocked that he got to it. But got to it, he did. Three home runs for the Seminoles tonight. Florida has two, so the ball is carrying. There is no wind to speak of. The flag completely limp in center field as West comes out to doff his cap. So you're going to go with the ball is carrying tonight? <laughs> well, it's yeah. carrying out to right and left. This is Marco Dinges. He doubled his last time up. He's got a run score. Rio fastball for a strike. This is just one of those where you're sitting there if you're Florida. What do you do? Go bring in another arm. Let's see what we got. I mean, it's it's been an onslaught where Florida State is so comfortable at the plate. There has to be fastballs in. There has to be breaking balls off of those fastballs in. You got to move some people's feet. Line drive in the right center. Hit number 14, and it's a stand-up double. Second double of the night for Dinges. Mercy. His first double was in the second inning. Fastball away to right field. This thing is almost identical. Fastball away. Stays inside of it. Drives it over second base. Stand-up double. A home run, a double after the first out recorded by Ferrer and a pop out. And here comes Cantu again. Cantu, a single and a three run homer. And that home run to right field barely stayed fair, but it did. In the eighth spot. Didn't mean to out in front of home plate. Phil Pot has to hurry. They get him. 
Dinges rounds third. A hold there, two down. It's a tradition unlike any other Thursday and Friday, 9 a.m. Eastern on ESPN Plus and 3 Eastern on ESPN. Once again, exclusive first and second round coverage of the Masters. And this will be the 88th edition of the tournament, 17th straight year. We have coverage on ESPN. John Rahm won it last year. He's the favorite to win it again. Two down. And here is Faro, who's got a two hit night. That is Alex Philpott's best pitch so far to date is that changeup. Struck out Tibbs with it. Couple of swing and misses right here in this at bat. You have to show a fastball on occasion to keep the hitters honest, or else they're going to sit all over it. You have to do something different. You have to protect the changeup. You have to give the hitter a velocity to base that changeup off of. And if you keep throwing changeups, the hitters are just going to go up there sitting on the one speed and 82 mile an hour changeup. One two pitch off the end of the bat. Dale Thomas at third throws across to retire the side. But this game, you know, started well for you. Go back to back with bombs from Curlin and Caglione. Uh, that's the bright spot. Uh, your takeaway, at least, as to how this game started. That was a good thing. Yeah, I mean, we got off to a good start and um, got on the board in the first, and then that's kind of been our MO this year. We've had trouble not giving up rebound runs when we scored, and obviously the first inning has been an issue for us, you know, for pretty much uh, a good part of the year you know, so far. Coach, I mean, you, you see teams that get comfortable in the box, and this seems to be one of those nights where Florida State seems to be on time for almost everything. What are your comments, adjustments for these pitchers going out there? Yeah, I mean, we, we pretty much try to, you know, establish the inner half of the play with our fastball early for that main reason. I think Ryan threw 20 pitches in the, in, in the first and 13 when we're fastballs, and we're trying to, you know, establish the inner half because they do a good job of covering the outer half, but. Um, Obviously, they put really good swings on there in the first. I think the first eight guys, you know, got on base, and um, we really haven't had an answer to slow them down. But credit them. They're swinging the bats really good, and hopefully we get a couple zeros on the board and get back into this thing. All right, Coach, thank you very much. Appreciate your time. Right, Thanks, thank Coach. You. Kevin O'Sullivan, in his 17th year now at Florida. As Ty Evans grounds out to start the fourth inning. Kevin just missed a, a second national title last year. Since coming to Florida in 2008, uh, there is no team in college baseball that has more NCAA tournament appearances or College World Series trips than Florida. 15 times to the tournament, eight College World Series trips. I mean, he's done an amazing job in Gainesville. He really has. I mean, it's it's one of the elite programs year in and year out. Lined off the bat of Thomas, Cam Smith. Throws it across. The second out. Uh, Andrew Armstrong has come on and has retired eight in a row. He's done a nice job. Gave up a first pitch single to Tanner Garrison in the second inning. But after that, it's been solid location. Fastball's down. Funky arm swing. Good breaking ball. Good change up. Two outs for Tanner Garrison. Garrison with a single to center is only time up. Four hits for Florida tonight. Offense has been in a funk. I mean, that's why I'm sure that warmed Sully's heart when he saw those two home runs yeah. fly out of here right away. I mean, in four games last week, the Gators hit 215 as a team. Now again on Sunday, you know, showed signs of coming out of it. But I mean, hit volume and, and, and timeliness of hitting has kind of been a season long problem for Florida. It really has, and it's been a struggle. And, and Coach O'Sullivan said it in our little talk just a minute ago how they get some runs on the board early, but they don't have a shutdown inning following that. And Florida State really amplified it with a six spot in the bottom of the first after getting two home runs to get off to a great start.
Full count to Garrison. The lefty Armstrong has been sharp. Fly ball. It's hit to deep right center, still carrying, but on the warning track, Williams is there to put it away. Andrew Armstrong, two-time national coach of the year with the Irish. Took Notre Dame to the College World Series a couple of years ago. This is a fly ball for Alex Lodis. Carrying deep to left, still going on the warning track. Tyler Shelnut hauls it in. And Lodis is still the only man in this Florida State order without a hit tonight. I thought he got that one. The way Shelnut was drifting back. And the way the ball has been flying here tonight. Weedoff man Max Williams hitting for the fourth time in this game. And here we are in the fourth inning. <laughs> Infield single, a strikeout, and a comebacker to the mound. Alex Philpot. Well, he hasn't batted since the second. <laughs> he had the third inning off. <laughs> Philpot hangs one, whacked down the line, but hooking foul. Philpott, since coming on, has given up four runs and six hits and two and a third. He is a freshman. Again, it's a very young pitching staff. Brandon Neely has been the Friday night starter the last two weekends. This is going to be Jack Caglione standing on the bag for round number two. Liam Peterson, a true freshman, they just moved into the rotation to take over that number two starter spot. He's kind of struggled keeping hitters in the ballpark. Kate Fisher was the number one guy the first six weeks, and they're now using him out of the bullpen. And then Caglione is starting game three on the weekends. Philpott's done a nice job this inning and the last last inning other than the home run. He's got a really nice change up slider keeps the ball down. Except when he falls. Which happens on occasion you lose your footing as you come through. Try not to think about it the next pitch. Two hits for Cam Smith. Always a good looking player here. He's uh, expected to go high in the draft. Took some lumps as the everyday third baseman last year as he swings and miss count even at two and two. Hit 258 last year, struck out 66 times, but it has all started to come together here in 2024. Yeah, he's cut back on the strikeouts, getting the pitchers more in the zone, which is going to be well to his strength. Just like that, great take. Full we'll count to Cam Smith. He lays off the 91 up out of the zone and then he's on time a little bit early on that 86 mile an hour cut slider down out of the zone. It's just bat speed is elite. Line drive, base hit, third hit tonight, and his seventh this season against Florida pitcher. I mean, I love the fact he just stays inside this ball, doesn't try to do too much. Fastball inner part of the plate, and you can see that just inside-out swing that will keep him on time on that slider that you just saw before that. But that's just textbook right through the zone. He's in the zone for a long time. And that was his last. No, maybe not. Make it. Pitcher number four for the Gators tonight. And the first guy he's got to face is James Tibbs, player of the year candidate. And it's down at him. How's that? Welcome to the game, freshman. Yeah, one of the top hitters in the country. 
Tibbs has an RBI double. And an opposite field home run to his credit tonight. He struck out looking his last time to the plate. Guy who was really cut down on the strikeouts. Not that they were ever that much of an issue anyway, but rarely strike it, strikes out. He's got twice as many walks as he does strikeouts, in fact. No, and that's the book on him. He's ultra intelligent. He's cut down the strikeouts by getting and recognizing pitches and, and keep keeping everything in the zone. And he walks here. Thought we might see him get turned loose, but none of those four pitches were competitive, and I believe that's our first walk of the game. It is. If you would have told me that we had 15 runs, we're in the bottom of the fourth, and there was not any walks, I would have um, told you you're crazy. So two on, two out. And Jaime Ferrer, who's got a single in three trips. Junior from Puerto Rico. He's been one of the Seminoles' most consistent hitters the last few years. Freshman All-American a couple of years ago. Hit 320 that year. Hit 324 last year, and his average right about there again this season. Just an ultra aggressive hitter. He's competitive at bats. He's looking to do damage from the first pitch on. And his power numbers are up. Career high 11 homers. Fouled straight back. Thought that was going to get over the screen here, and I was going to have a chance at that one. You know the screen goes all the way down from oh. the top, right? That was a really good flinch. I was worried you're going to fall out of your seat. You won't ever hear about that one again. Oh, that hit him. That's the second time tonight that Ferrer has been hit. And on the same elbow. Most of the guys that I've ever faced, power hitters, you have to pitch them and work them in. He's trying to run this fastball, or a little cut fastball in. Ferrer just stays in there like a pro. Takes it in the exact same spot that he got hit in the first inning. Well, we talked about the midweek woes for Florida, and you can see why that's been a problem. It's really hard with young relief pitching to do well in the midweek. Base is loaded. And this is Jackson West, who's got a two-hit night, a two-run double in the first, and a home run in the third. And now a visit to the mound for Tanner Garrison. And we'll see how long Robert Satin's going to stay in this ballgame. I think we only got a couple strikes. Two strikes out of nine. This is a little motivational speech from Tanner Garrison going, look, you need to settle in. you got to attack the zone or this is going to be a long night for us, a short night for you. Talked about all the freshmen that have pitched this season for Florida. Ten. Most in the SEC and six freshmen have appeared in conference play. That is one of the things Coach O'Sullivan was talking about that's been part of their struggles is just the young guys and they got to figure out a way to get guys out at this level. It is a big, big jump from high school to the SEC. One I want to Jackson West. We started the first and third game at BC over the weekend. It hits in all three games. Two hits tonight. That one's fouled off. It's one and two. Really nice slider. Nice job by Satin to mix it up a little bit. He's got a low arm slot. A little bit of a Sid Fernandez, so the ball comes off and it rises. He needs to show that slider again, try to take it outside the zone towards the right-handed batter's box. Two and two to the Florida State catcher. Transfer from Alabama. Seems like they raided Alabama a little bit, didn't little they? Yeah, Max Williams. Jackson West. Inside out swing down the line, left field. Long run for Shellnut. And he's not going to get there. They're going to call that 
a foul ball. Boy, that looked like it was right on the line, but Jeff Gosney, the third base umpire, was right out there to make that call. It's foul. We're going to have another review. I think we are. I think Jarrett is one for two on reviews so far. First one was a big one with Max William on an infield single to start the game. You can see Gosney kind of bumping into a Florida fielder there. Mm. It's close, but at least from that angle, it does look foul. It did starting Thursday as the Hurricanes of Miami are here. Here's the call, and it is indeed foul. So Jackson West will come back to home plate, and the at bat continues. Bases loaded, two outs, count is two and two to the Florida State catcher. I mean, this is a big rivalry week for yeah. Florida State. Yes, it is. And they've been bouncing all over the place. They got in about 2 a.m. Monday morning from Boston College. Yeah, and now four games in five days against their biggest rivals. Oh, that hit him. West takes it off the back. This is going from bad to worse for Florida. Rotten, Robert Satton. Hits West and Smith scores. West gets his fourth RBI. Trying to go with the slider. Now watch Tanner Garrison right there going, oh, come on, we had him on that pitch. We had him on the slider. And the catcher is just frustrated. The starter, Ryan Slater, had the same problem tonight. And now Robert Satin is out. He faced. Three batters walked one and hit two. Bases loaded. Two outs. One run already in this inning for Florida State. Marco Dingus. He's been on three times. That's two times the plate. Doubles. And he cranks this one to left. Headed toward the scoreboard. Goodbye home run. It's a grand slam. Seventh grand slam this year for Florida State. And they have tore a hole in this baby. It's 17 to 3. Gets a slider down in the zone. Saw a couple fastballs away. Didn't like them. I'll take that breaking ball down. And I will take it over the scoreboard. Florida State, two touchdowns and a field goal. The Florida's a solo field goal. 17 to 3. Had to make it a football score now, didn't we? Mm. 33 runs batted in. For Dingus. Fourth home run tonight for Florida State. As they have 62 on the year, they came in to the night ranked third in the league in that category. Cantu hits it deep. That one stays in the yard and it ends the inning against Florida this year and you are well on your way toward a sweep against uh, this vaunted rival uh, what does it mean to play this well against Florida when they come to town well first of all the atmosphere here I've seen a lot of ball games through the years in this stadium this is as good as you get you have the marching Chiefs playing you know, this started as them coming out to play the national anthem and you can see what it turned into down there so that is really really cool and you can't have a better atmosphere for college baseball than this. So it starts with that. Florida's a really talented team. And uh, our guys are clearly on it right now. And we got to get some of these young arms through these innings and continue to compete and execute. But the environment, the atmosphere, the fans, the band, and the way the guys have responded today has been really, really special to watch. Oh, this has been an amazing atmosphere, Coach. Uh, tell us about Andrew Armstrong, really solid in relief coming in in three innings and just shut this offense down well 
he's been through this before, and he can do a little bit of everything for you. And he's got three pitches. He moves the fastball around. He has good little slider and feel for his changeup. Now, clearly, we're at a point where we didn't want to extend him much further. He was pitching fine. We didn't want to extend him much further. But he's experienced. He's got some savvy. He's got feel for what he's doing. So he's started some games for us occasionally, and, and he's clearly done a good job in relief. All right, Link, thank you very much. Good Thanks, luck coach. the rest of the way tonight and the season. All right, guys, Good thank you. Link Jarrett. So Brady Lout comes on now in relief of Armstrong, who relieved Abraham as Florida hits here in the fifth. Link Jarrett was an All-American shortstop for Mike Martin back in the 1990s. He was on Martin's staff in 2003. And now the guardian of... 11's program and legacy and, and it means so much of to him to have this position uh, this is the job he always really wanted even when he was at Notre Dame he had eyes on this position because he always wanted to be Mike Martin yeah yeah and I mean it wasn't a shock to anybody in the college baseball world when he made that move from Notre Dame to here You think he's having any fun right now? <laughs> I mean, he's got the band out here, packed house. His offense is in fuego. I think this marching Chiefs thing could be a tradition that sticks. I've never seen the band come out to a baseball game, let alone stay. That's going to get under the glove of Rowe. And into right field for Michael Robertson. So the leadoff man is on for Florida. Just the fifth hit tonight for the Gators. There's Brady Lau. Freshman left-hander out of Plainfield, Illinois. This is his seventh trip to the mound this year. He's made a couple of starts. Yeah, solid numbers. 1.69, 10 and two-thirds, six hits. 18 strikeouts in those 10 innings. Opponents are hitting 158. This Cape drives the ball on a downward angle. Really effective in this world of high fastballs. He's able to work the zone down. Boy, a big swing from Curlin. Perlin started the game with a home run and strikes out here. Curlin and Caglione back-to-back -back homers in the top of the first. And Florida had this, this crowd quiet as a church. But really since those back-to-back -back homers, Florida has been pretty quiet offensively. They've been very quiet. I mean, you're thinking this is going to be an offensive explosion by Florida, and they were angry about what happened in Columbia, Missouri this past weekend. But after those first two home runs, it's been pretty quiet. I got to you got to tip your cap to Aunt Andrew Armstrong, who came out and really did a great job after giving up a single hit. First hitter he faces on the first pitch he throws. And after that, it was just silence. Ground ball for Cat Leon, and that's a base hit into right. Two hits for Jack sliding into third is Robertson. Runners at the corners for Florida with one out. Break, breaking ball down in the zone, drops the head, just basically rolls over it, but when you're hot, you're hot. Pulls it through the hole. Base runner keeping the first baseman, can't two on the bag. Hayden Yost is going to come in and pinch run, so that's going to be it for Jack. Caglione here tonight. Jack Caglione coming off his first poor start on the mound this season. Gave up seven runs in an inning and a third at Missouri in game three. Just a, a, an off game. And they haven't seen much of that from him in the last couple of years. No, he's been really, really good on the mound. 3 0 on the year, 3 6 7 ERA. 44 strikeouts and 34 innings have really done unbelievable job two-way. Tibbs calls everybody up, makes the catch. 
and Colby Shelton is up. Two down. Kips did a nice job. Calling off for Rowe, calling off Max Williams, getting himself in a good position in case there was a play at the plate with a runner on third. Shell net 0 for 2 with a ground out to third and a comebacker to the mound. You know, this is a little bit of old school stuff, but Lau. Fastball plays, plays up. You know, it's 91 92. Doesn't look like a whole lot, but he locates it down really well. And then when it goes up, it just explodes. Tyler Shelnut made 50 starts last year for the Gators in his first season after the transfer from Santa Fe Community College. He's been a third and left this year. And he strikes out looking. So Brady and the ESPN app said it before. It's going to be a really tough week. A quick turnaround for Thursday's game with Miami. And four games in five days for Florida State. Well, and Coach Jarrett talked about it when we were out on the field earlier before the game. And he said, you know what? Here's an MLB schedule. If this is what you guys really want to do for a living, these guys play 162 games. They'll go three weeks without a day off. You just get used to it, and you got to grind it out. Farrell going the opposite way. He's going to drop it in front of Yost, who's now in the game in left field. Tyler Shelnut has gone from left to first base. New shortstop as well for Florida, as Armando Albert is now playing short. You got to look at what Florida's got coming up. They've got South Carolina this weekend. You know, we, we saw Jack Caglione after he got that base hit. He was pinch run for his night is over. You know, Kevin O'Sullivan's already thinking probably about the weekend and saving his stars yeah. for what's going to be a very important SEC series as they try to get back on track in league play. Yeah, and you know what? A couple. I mean, Jack got his hits. Get him out of there. This game is pretty much out of hand. And get some younger guys a little bit of experience in this atmosphere. Boy, this is tagged to right, and this has a chance. Goodbye, home run. Lodis. The only guy in the lineup without a hit until that one. And it's 19 to 3, a two run shot for Alex Lodis. Fastball away is just driven. It's up and away. It's not a great pitch. Low D stays with it. Flat swing. Drives that one out of here. 19 to 3. And you know, Coach O'Sullivan was talking about we got to pitch in, we got to pitch in. All these balls have been fastballs out over the plate. Five home runs now, including a grand slam for the Knolls. Ground ball for Max Williams. That scared me for a second. I thought he was going to flip it. I thought he was going to flip it to Grayson Smith, and they were both about three feet from the bag. Cam Smith coming to the plate for the fifth time. He has three hits, all base knocks. Also struck out back to end the first, but another big night for Smith. He's a candidate for National Player of the Year as well. Everything he's done tonight, it's been singles to right field. He's done an unbelievable job of staying back, being comfortable in his, in his skin of just driving the ball to right field, hit a ball off the pitcher's glove for a single and an RBI. But three for four, his one strikeout was on a slider down out of the zone. And you can just see how 
comfortable he is in the batter's box. He's just letting the ball get deep. And guys like that, if you don't throw them fastballs in, they are never going to get off time. How, you think, how long do you think Link Jarrett's going to go with his guys? I mean, it's 19 to 3. You got a couple more innings, a couple at bats for some guys that don't get to swing it very often. Now, called strike three on the outside corner. Cam Smith didn't like it. <laughs> Fans upset at the home plate umpire, Travis Carson. You know, they're up 19 to 3 and they're getting greedy. Well, in, in the old days, and, and I'm talking about when I played, before they evaluated every umpire and, and every pitch that he calls, games like this, the zone opens up, and everybody knows it, and you're up there swinging the bat, and the pitchers are throwing balls close, and also at an RBI double in the first. Tibbs is average now 427, so it's up six points since the start of the game. Florida State now 45 to 14 outscoring the Gators this year. Curlin throws out Tibbs and aside from the low D Homer, about there. There is a, a 10 run rule in effect after seven. It has not been the Gators year when it comes to Florida State. No. This has yeah. not been a good matchup for them. Florida State trying to sweep the Gators for the first time in a three-game season series in almost a quarter century. 2000 was the last time they did it. As Hudson Rowan is the new pitcher for Florida State, freshman left-hander. Rowan's gotten in 10 games. This is his 11th, 6-1-0 ERA. 10 and a third innings, 21 punch outs, 12 walks. Opponents are hitting 139. Who came in his hill for two? We'll foul it back here. Count rides along at one and two. Three runs on six hits for Florida. I mean, some of their stars have already been taken out of the game, including Jack Caglione. But I mean, it's a lineup that features four guys, at least coming into the night, that had an OPS over a thousand, and and Caglione's was over 1,200. I mean, so there is some real power and run-producing guys in the Florida lineup. It's just some of the other spots down the lineup that uh, haven't had a lot of offense at times this year as Heyman draws a walk and it seems like over the last couple of weeks there have been several guys who've kind of gone south at the same time offensively yeah yeah and that's the problem you run into the SEC and all of a sudden you run into a hot pitching staff or and that was what coach O'Sullivan said before the game was just we've had too many guys go quiet at the same time Ty Evans swings and misses. Evans tonight is one for two with a single and a run scored. He was the last Gator to score back in the second inning. But you know what? I mean, i got to be honest. You come into one of these games and you get two runs, first two guys, you're up 2 nothing, And then all of a sudden, Florida State answers with six. There is a little bit of a, a, an effort on the offensive side to press and keep up. And if you start pressing, as a hitter, you're going to struggle. You're not you're not going to do well. You're not going to have success. And it feels like Florida State just kind of kept going and, and just tipping over dominoes and, and just exploding offensively. And Florida's just tried to keep up, and then they started pressing. And you got to look at a little bit of the pitching. Andrew Armstrong was really good. Lout was good. Indiana with that first pick. So let pipe cinch. Right, they're going to take Caitlin Clark. Ground ball under Cam Smith's glove at third base. Heyman goes to third. 
And Ty Evans has a base knock, his second hit of the game. And with nobody out, Florida has something going for the first time in a while. Harrison had got a single on his first pitch that he saw of the night in the second inning. He flew out deep to center field on a fastball up. Got runners on first and third. You just take a look right there. Jackson West walking out and making sure that everybody's on the same page. In case Florida tries to steal, you're still playing the game. No matter what the score is, so you're still playing the game as a defender of, okay, you know what, if Florida tries to do something right here, runners on first and third, here's the, here's the defense that we're putting it up, and I'm sure it would probably be, I would try to throw it down and get the out. Garrison, such a good defensive catcher, Greg. Leads the SEC in caught stealing rate. Line drive to right center, and this will be caught. Tibbs makes the catch, and good arm. Heyman can't come home. Two down. Really solid. Tibbs out and right, it's able to get around this ball just a shade. It was well hit in the right center. Gets around it enough that he can get his body on line to make that throw, and it was a strike towards home plate. Florida chasing 16 runs. Certainly does not want to lose one right now when they got a chance with a couple guys on base. You were talking about Garrison. I mean, he was the number one catcher in the country last year in framing pitches. Transfers from Coastal Carolina. Now that's a new stat. That is a new stat. Explain it. <laughs> no, uh, the framing is the theoretical how many pitches they steal inside the box gotcha. that you see or the box that they get and put up or here's the strike zone. How many pitches do they steal? And that would be if a ball's out of the zone and they, are, they end up framing it up a little bit for a strike, their percentages of pitches framed. And so he was one of the number one guys at stealing strikes last year at Coastal Carolina. Well done. Thank you. Yeah, Threw me right uh, there on the spot. You every assume that I know this stuff. <laughs> every couple of years, there's a new stat that finds its way into the lexicon as Michael Robertson draws a walk. He's been on base three times tonight for Florida. Buster Posey was certainly good at framing pitches over the course of his career. Yeah, he was really good at hitting them, too. He was fun to watch. So base is loaded. And Kate Curlin's up. Curlin had a home run, first time up. You know, he would like to give the Gators a spark here if he can leave the yard. Chip into this big Florida State lead. Right now, you're just trying to build for the weekend. You're trying to get some guys going offensively. Just get some good, something good to come out of this game. Curlin hit leadoff all year last year. Well, he's hit with a pitch on his throwing hand in late February. And it was a broken hand that he's been playing with. You see that padding on his hand. So he's been playing with that for more than a month. It's, it's affected him. Pitch is high and he draws a walk. So Florida gets a run here in the sixth inning to make it 19 to four. But he's such a gamer. I mean, he's tough. You, you can't keep him out of the lineup. No, freshman All-American, first team All-SEC last year. Big numbers as a freshman, 297, 17 home runs, 50 RBI. This past week, lost a midweek game to Southern, then dropped two of three to Vanderbilt and Baton Rouge. They fell out of the top 25. This is Yost hitting for the first time. Hayden Yost. Came in for Jack Caglione, left-handed hitting freshman. Gators really high on this guy. They think that someday he is going to be the everyday center fielder.
Bases loaded. Foul ball. And it's one and two to Yost. But LSU, their RPI now, 46. And they're three and nine in the SEC. I mean, it's going to be hard for the Tigers to get to that 13-14 win yeah. threshold, which is usually where you need to be in the SEC to get into the NCAA tournament. And I'm sure there's a little bit of panic in Baton Rouge right now with what's going on. Yo strikes out as Holtz comes on and gets. Again, the the 10 run rule could come into effect here tonight. It's 10 runs after seven. And start seeing some benches clear. Ross coming in to pinch hit. For Ferrer. And a new pitcher for Florida. This is Riley Whitmer. Whitmer, another freshman. One of the 10 freshman pitchers used this year by Kevin O'Sullivan. Whitmer's fourth appearance, no runs given up. One and a third, one hit, two walks, one strikeout. Limited work, and he comes walking in right here, getting a big inning of work. This is the 11th pitcher of the night for both teams combined. It's been one of those nights. Often you see this in the midweek, especially for Florida this not against, year. Not with two ranked runs. teams, though. Do you? DMS Ross at the plate here for the Seminoles. He's been battling injury the last several weeks. Now starting to get back into the lineup on a more consistent basis. 260, no homers, 13 runs batted in. For a while there, he was the leadoff man in the starting center fielder, but then got hurt. He's been dealing with that. Ross puts it in play. That's a base hit. Why not? Off the bench. Gets in the game, and that's hit number 19. Well, Thursday and Friday at 9 a.m. Eastern on ESPN. Yes, it is. One of my favorite weeks. This is Jordan Williams. Jordan Williams. He doesn't have a, a ton of at-bats this year. He's hitting 500. All right, here's, here's the big question for you, Clay, in this situation. You're hitting 500 on the year. Do you want any more at-bats, or are you done? <laughs> if you can end on a 500 batting average. It's only April. I want more at-bats. Just checking. You know, some guys wouldn't mind finishing their college season with five, uh, a 500 <laughs> batting average. Redshirt junior out of Odessa, Florida. Played at San Jack College, Juco College in Texas. He takes a strike here. Florida State heading for their 27th win of the year. And they're ready to go 19 and 1 here at Dick Houser Stadium. Well, this is quite the home atmosphere. And then you throw the band in doing the national anthem. You got Charlie Ward roaming around the premises. I heard David Ross might be roaming around the premises. That's a pretty good atmosphere for a college baseball game in, on a Tuesday. I mean, they got you here. Greg Olson comes out of the bullpen to fill in. <laughs> Williams draws a walk. I mean, this was a team that was 19-0 and at one point. And, you know, we're just barely in the top 25. There was a while during that streak to start the year where they weren't even in the top 25. And now they look like a team that could compete to get to Omaha. Andrew Duncan pitch hitting right here. Looks like Coach Jarrett is emptying the bench. Oh, freshman. By the way, 
Florida State jumped from 14 to 10 in the polls this week. Winning two out of three at Boston. Strike. That was part of the fun conversation with, with Coach Jarrett was he was talking about playing in Boston. It's freezing cold. And as they're flying home Sunday night, he goes, I want you guys to take a look down out of your windows right now on the plane. He goes, the Mets are playing a doubleheader right now against the Tigers. And tomorrow afternoon, the Tigers will be doing their opening day in Detroit. So if you guys are thinking it's cold. Fly to center. And that's first out of the inning. But if you guys are thinking it's cold and you got a rough life of having to fly back and play Florida day after tomorrow, well, it gets worse the higher up you go. Yep, got to toughen up. Here's Lance Triple now to hit in Cam 2 spot. But the RPI now for Florida State, Greg, it's, it's third. It's, it's number three behind only Clemson, who swept Florida State. And Arkansas, I, the Clemson series loss, the, the series sweep at the hands of the Tigers, really the only blemish yeah. uh, for Florida State this year. Yeah, no, they, they have played well. They've taken care of the games that they need to take care of. I mean, it doesn't hurt that you're going to go 3-0 against in-state Florida. Three of their five losses to Clemson. A single loss to Louisville and a single loss to Boston College. They swept Notre Dame middle of March. 0 and 3 against Clemson. Triple goes down swinging two down. Lose the middle game against Louisville. Lose the middle game in 11 innings at Boston College. Taking care of their business midweeks. Get some quality quality opponents. Here's a guy that uh, they're really excited about, Cal Fisher. And the game tying solo home run on Sunday against Boston College, a freshman from Deerfield, Wisconsin. And gets off the glove. Or Garrison, but he scrambles back. Fisher who Link Jarrett calls the most polished freshman he's ever had. He uh, was an all-star in the Northwoods League last summer. Really helped him get ready for this level. Homered in his first college at bat with the Seminoles. And he's been very productive in his opportunities. Not in the lineup tonight, but it's a pinch hit opportunity here in the sixth inning. Yeah, I mean, 11 for 29, hitting 379, three bombs, nine RBI. Breaking ball, that sails high. Two and one to Fisher. Nineteen runs, nineteen hits for Florida State, and Florida would need a big inning to keep from getting ten runs in the seventh. Well, they had a shot last inning to get some runs in. They got one. All right, last chance for Florida. They need six. 19 to 4, Florida State. But their first child soon. Good to be with you again, buddy. Yeah, I've enjoyed it. We're thinking about the Travis family too tonight. I hope everything's going well. Yeah, I do too. 19 to 4, Florida State needs three outs to finish this game early. And it's been a really tough year for the Gators against their rivals, Florida State. Got beat twice in route fashion earlier this year and it's going to happen again tonight. Armando Albert. Yeah, he came in earlier as a defensive replacement at short. 
Batting for the first time for Florida. Connor Holtz came in last inning. Bases loaded, two outs. Got the strike out of Yost. Had some wholesale defensive changes with Florida State on the field. I mean, when you put up 45 runs in three games against your heated rival, I mean, you talk about bragging rights yeah. for a season. Yeah. In-state recruiting, a whole lot goes with it, but we are making a packed house happy tonight. Back to Holtz. He's got it. And Albert is retired. Holtz has got a nice weapon in that curveball. Creating a little bit of havoc for left-handed hitters. Here's sophomore infielder slash outfielder Ashton Wilson now to bat for Florida. Gators uh, two outs away from losing their fourth straight. I mean, they haven't had a winning streak of more than two games since the beginning of March. Last year, they were just incredibly consistent. They had one two-game losing streak and one three-game losing streak all year. And right now, they're going to lose their fourth in a row. They've had several streaks of multiple games where they've lost. And again, there's a lot of season left. Yeah. Kevin O'Sullivan, he's always got a smile on his face. Great. great countenance about that man. I, he's very positive. And, and there's a lot of year left. And because of the tough schedule they've got in the second half, there's opportunities to build that resume up and get some big SEC wins. Yeah, no, it, there it is. And he recognizes that, but he also recognizes it's going to be some tough sledding with the teams coming up. Got Arkansas, Tennessee, South Carolina, Kentucky. All in the next four weeks. I mean, yeah, you're going to build that resume up, the RPI. You got to take care of business, and these freshman pitchers that we've seen tonight are going to have to start figuring out how to, as Coach O'Sullivan said, navigate through these innings. Navigating an inning sounds really easy, doesn't it? Wilson draws a walk here <laughs> with one out. Hasn't when, been the case tonight. Well, when, when I put it that way, to navigate an inning, it just sounds like it's really easy. I'll just work around a couple of these hits and walks and, you know, find a couple guys I can get out. Here's Done. Done, a comebacker that's going to get into center field. Brody Done, sophomore who we thought might be in the starting lineup tonight as the DH. It's a pinch hit single. So they're two on with one out. It's that first pitch fastball. First thing he sees, takes it right back up the box. And now Blake Brookins will hit for Florida. A freshman. Six foot five, 215 pound left hander. So the Gators have South Carolina this weekend, Greg, and you know, the Gamecocks have kind of had issues of their own lately. They've lost three of four SEC series. So that's going to be a massive series for both yeah. Florida and South Carolina this weekend. Last year, the Gamecocks swept Florida in Columbia. And they'll be in Gainesville this weekend. You know, I mean, it makes SEC a lot of fun to watch every week because everything's a swing. You win two out of three, you lose two out of three, you get swept, you sweep, everything bounces you up, the, up or down the notch. There's a big strikeout by Holtz with that nasty hook in the dirt. And now Florida down to their last out. And Dale Thomas will hit for himself. I am sure that O'Sullivan is looking for Thomas to get some somewhat on a roll, leaving him in here. He got a single, his last at bat. 
Now the fans have the brooms out here for the first time since 2000. Florida State ready to sweep the Gators in a regular season three-game series. Runners are going to advance. Now the Gators down to their last strike. I mean, the only thing that would make it more obnoxious with the brooms is to take them over the Florida dugout. <laughs> Sold out crowd on its feet. Line drive to center. Ross is there. It's over. 19 to 4. What an impressive show. Three, five, second instrumental interlude. Cooking up a masterpiece I'm the chef bringing flavors that I never cease Got my apron on, spatula in hand Flipping rhymes like I flip a pan Whisking up words, making magic with my flow Every verse I serve, it's like a culinary show From the stove to the mic, I'm on fire Mixing up metaphors, my skills never tire I'm the rap chef, slicing through beats Season with a rhythm, every verse is a feast From the pot to the page, I'm cooking up rhymes A culinary wordsmith ahead of my time I chop it up like veggies on a cutting board Crafting each line sharper than a sword My words marinate, soak into your soul Leaving you hungry for more, that's my goal I saute similes, grilling metaphors My flow's so hot, it'll leave you scorched From the appetizer to the main course I serve up bars with unstoppable force I'm the rap chef, slicing through beats Season with a rhythm, every verse is a feast From the pot to the page, I'm cooking up rhymes A culinary wordsmith Ahead of my time So next time you hear my tracks No it ain't by chance I'm the chef in the kitchen Bringing flavor to the dance From the first bite to the last You'll savor every line I'm the rap chef And this is my design